Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I am actually bringing a friend of mine who has been on the show before and one of my longtime friends in Los Angeles. Uh, You probably saw him recently uh, on my 500th episode where I edited in some footage from my going away party from Golden Apple Comics. Uh, he actually told a really great story about the first time we met that I don't remember, where apparently I was a, I was a little I was a little firm with him uh, coming to Golden Apple Comics on Free Comic Day and enforcing the rules a, a little too strong. If I knew him the way I knew him now, I probably would have let him break the rules a little bit, which says uh, that I can be bought, I think. Uh, so my friend is Joe Schlepsky, and Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show today. <laughs> thank you, Steve, for having me on, man. So happy to, so happy to be chatting with you again. I miss you. Oh man, I miss you too. And yeah, you were first. Um, you're one of the first people to ever be on the Venom vlog. I think actually the first, besides myself. Uh, I I wrote you a message one day and said, "Hey, can I come by Golden Apple and film a conversation with you, where we talked about Venom the Mace?" And uh, and I still, to me, that's still one of my favorite episodes of my show. Oh well, it's so one. It's always fun to talk to you both in real life and for broadcast purposes. Uh, and two, it's always fun to talk about something as abysmal as Venom the Mace. <laughs> yeah, because we also went down like a, a really dark rabbit hole of like the, the Shadow Men or whatever, the Shadow Society. Yeah, yeah like we went yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we went down a really dark rabbit hole of useless Marvel lore there. And uh, yeah, it was a mm-hmm. it was a blast. That's what's fun, man. That's the dark corners of, of the Marvel universe and any any comic universe really when you have that many creators writing stuff. Stuff goes off on wild tangents that is absolutely insane. It's true. Shadow, oh. Shadow Masters. Shadow Masters, right? Shadow Masters. That's it. Yeah, Shadow Masters. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and so if anyone want to go back and check that episode out, Venom the Mace, please do. Joe was awesome on it. And like I said, he was at my going away party for Golden Apple Comics where he shared a really awesome story that actually pretty much, it made me tear up while I was filming. And uh, it made me realize how hard it was to film the going away party and be the guy who was the going away party was for. Because I was like a lot of, like you and Ryan, you were telling stories that just choked me up. And uh, and But it was so... Oh. So fun to hear that. I didn't realize that was our first interaction together, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> listen, Seek, I've, I've been bringing people to tears for over well over 40 years now. <laughs> um, Joe and I, when we met, I feel like um, the one thing that really gravitated to me, first of all, the first thought I had in my head when I met Joe, um, where we saw each other on a consistent basis, uh, I kept thinking, man, this guy sounds like how I imagine... Ben Grimm sounds when he talks and then turns out you actually do a great Ben Grimm impersonation which makes you sound exactly like the character oh uh, well you know uh, you know, see, I don't see I don't like to brag or anything but you know being the idol being the idol of millions uh, it's a lot of work and uh, you gotta work hard at it break free from that uh, the, the yoke of Yancey Street the only problem is I got that, uh, that, that no good Nick Johnny giving me the hot foot all the, all the time you know <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's so good. And he's every time he does it, it, like it would make me laugh. I would go to work sometimes because Joe and I worked together at Golden Apple for a while. And uh, there'd be days where like I would go in with really massive headaches, and I would try my best not to show it. And there would be some days where I felt like, oh, I'm gonna crack. Like today is I'm gonna I'm gonna break. And then Joe, it would be like a Saturday, and Joe would show up, and Joe would just instantly cheer me up we would just talk comics and it was almost like getting just a dose of medicine every time like it would you have no idea how how awesome for me at least it was to work with a guy like you who was always professional who was uh, very knowledgeable about the products who was a good salesman and could cheer me up all day like that i don't think i think i've maybe worked with three people in my life that have had that ability Oh man, well that's that. You're gonna make me tear up now. That's, <laughs> thank you. That's very that's very kind of you to say. I I feel the same way about you. I I always enjoyed working. With you. I've actually been really blessed out here uh, with with working. Uh, you know, because I, I only I'm only at Golden Apple on Saturdays. That's all my schedule allows. And between you, Jordan, Pablo, now Alex. I'm not sure if you know Alex. Oh well, yeah, but, Alex. I do. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not even I'm not even kidding you. The, the four of you have been my main Saturday guys. For, for a good number of years, I could not imagine. I could not imagine working with better people. You, 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 I've been really, really, really blessed. Um, so yeah, 
and you and you absolutely were the start of it. Oh man! Well, I'm happy to be one of the four anti horsemen uh, in that case. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me. I want. I want to talk a little bit about you two on a. You know. A little bit on a personal level talk about your connection with comic books and then we'll get into some of the content you create because the whole point of this show is like you know it's called the parasite podcast and i know some people who aren't familiar with that term uh, go wait what show am i on and i'm like no no no, it's fine parasite for us is a term of endearment um it's a you know obviously from the venom movie where he you know the he calls the suit a parasite and the parasite's like you know the suit's like what parasite apologize you know uh so no, wait wait it's not a wait wait hold on wait you, i thought this was a, uh, i thought this show was it was about the class struggles in south korea all right, look, we're going to get to that. It is about that is movie, that too. Yeah, okay, no, it, okay, it is about that. It, it, okay, it, so it, will, I, it will be about that soon. That's what I signed up for. That's what I signed up for. <laughs> we're here to talk about an amazing filmmaker's uh, you know, film, uh, Parasite, and that's this whole show is about that. Um, <laughs> and I just interview people and what they thought of the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, hey, I'll be honest. Let me lead off with that. I thought it was going to be uh, some kind of horror movie, and I kept expecting. So I, I loved the movie, but but it was sold to me as like, oh my god, it gets amazing, and like I can't tell you, I can't spoil it for you. And so I loved it, but I I literally three quarters of the way through the movie, I kept expecting someone to turn into a vampire. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it's it is horrific in another way, but you're you're right. It does. I think it's the way it's shot. It it, it kind of. Get, especially in the trailer, it kind of gives this illusion that there's something else there, maybe. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, but uh, but you're right. I could see someone pitching that or t- hyping it up for someone and, and you getting the, that kind of idea. That's pretty awesome. That's like when I saw, recently I saw Fantasy Island, and I thought that was nothing like it was pitched at, to me at, and I actually kind of liked it for that reason. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed Fantasy Island. I thought that was yeah. pretty well made. Yeah, I, 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 I think it played out exactly like an episode of the old show, and... I, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, same with me. I was like, man, everyone hated on this movie. And I was like, maybe it's because the trailer made it look like a slasher flick. Um, and it was nothing like a slasher. It was like, no, this was kind of like the old show was. It was weird. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you getting into comic books. Because obviously that's where we connect. You, Like you said, you work Saturdays at Golden Apple Comics. And you've been a comic fan your whole life. You Your collection, by the way, is freaking awesome. Uh, and uh, And I... I want to know kind of where what got you started in comics. I don't know if we've ever had this conversation before. Yeah. Um, so I so so there's like two phases for me. It's funny because I was an avid, avid, avid reader when I was a kid, but I wasn't reading comic books. Okay. So um, yeah. So I loved Superman the movie. I was <clears throat> three years old when it came out, and uh, you know, and that was you know I thought my mom took me to see theaters and. That was, I believe it was on CBS. They would show it on CBS like once or twice a year. You know, this is different times. And um, I never missed it. Like that was, you know, pre-V, pre-VCR and all that stuff. Um, it was it was everything to me. And I watched Super Friends cartoons, um, you know, but I loved Star Wars and all that stuff. So, I mean, that was like, I was, that was it was 100% my feel out. But I did not have comic books. Um, I had a, I had a handful. I had like one or two issues of something or other laying around, but but not comics as we know it. Um, and in like the first or second grade, I think it was the first grade, I got my tonsils out, and for a gift, you know, like to to make me feel better. My mom I was a big reader. My mom bought me the Super Dictionary. You know, the fame, the infamous Super Dictionary. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where um, I and and I literally I'm looking at it right now. I literally still have it on my shelf. Uh, we can read passages from it later if you want. <laughs> uh, but she she bought me the super dictionary and I read through, I read it like it was a book, like it, like it was like a novel, like it was a dictionary, and I was reading it like a novel. <laughs> and it, it it really helped me. It helped my vocabulary. It helped you know a decade. It, it was amazing. I, I read a dictionary and I read it like three times over the course of the next three years, um, and. So there was this love of superheroes and stuff, but I wasn't reading comic books. And it wasn't until like the fifth or sixth grade, probably, I think I was about 11, when um, my, uh, for Easter, my mother, again, God bless her, uh, she got me um, a G.I. Joe uh, uh, digest book, like the little, you know, like this, like the Archie digest size. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where we printed three three comics, 
and um, Shy Guy got a bunch of those for Easter, and I was like, hold on a second, because I was into the G.I. Joe toy and the cartoon at that point. I was like, they do comic books for this? <laughs> what? And uh, and I was like, where did you get this? You know, 7-Eleven. Let's go back. <laughs> you know? So we went and we bought all the G.I. Joes that they had there, and then I needed more. So, so she looked up in the yellow pages and found that there were actual comic book shops. And so we went to a comic book shop. And then it, it was all downhill from there. And it literally started. And it was funny because I remember only collecting... I just wanted to die this. I specifically remember the guy at the counter said, saying to me, well, you know, we have the actual comic book sitting right here. And I looked at him and I went, I just want these. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I want the digest. That's it, man. Uh, yeah, I want the, I want the smaller undersized reprint edition. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, as, a, as an adult collector now, that seems like a funny thing, which is probably you know, why that guy had that reaction too. But but you as a kid, you're like, you know, this is, it's perfect for a kid. That's why they make those digest yeah. size, yeah. Yeah, like, it, you know, because you're smaller. You're, you're literally a smaller person. Yeah. So, like, they fit in your hand, you know, they fit in your hand. They're, they're, yeah, and there's, you know, there's more there's more value in it because it's got three stories, you know, instead of just one and all that all that stuff. Uh, but very quickly, I started getting the actual books, and um, very quickly, and then uh, and then it was uh, it was it it was GI Joe for about a year. I had a paper route at the time, and, uh, you know. So I I, I I think I made like seventy five dollars a a month. Wow, on my yeah, paper route. that's a lot for a kid. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot, and and uh, and I, I I'm not lying. I spent all of it on comic books. <laughs> like I started all of it. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, and so so that was yeah so that was it. So I I ride my bike to the comic shop every. It wasn't Wednesday then though. I think it, it was there was a period of time when it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. There was a time when it was Thursday. Thursday, there was yeah. A time when it was Friday. Yeah, uh-huh. Thursday I think was the the longest run. Yes. Yeah. For, for yeah. yeah for when we were collecting, I think Thursday was. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd go to Hero Hero Land Comics in, in Worth, Illinois, on 111th Street. I'd, I'd ride my bike up there, and I'd, I'd just get GI Joe's for about a year. And that was all I did. But I started looking around the store, and I was like, "Oh, they do other stuff more than GI Joe." And you know, and then GI Joe was a Marvel comic, so you'd have. And, and all, I read everything cover to cover. So I read all the letter pages, and I read all the um, promotional stuff, and the um, you know, like uh, the, the bullpen bulletins and everything. And they were talking about these X Men people. I'm like, I don't know who these X Men people are. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, but I think I saw him on an episode of. I was like, uh, they, I were kind of remember something about these guys on an episode of of Spider Man and His Amazing Friends. Right. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, and it branch so it branched off, and I could go on. Yeah, that's that's the thing about especially our generation of uh, collectors and stuff is uh, a lot of us did get pulled in from something outside of comics. Um, which doesn't seem to happen a ton these days, which is really weird to me. Um, and I think it's because they market them, marketed things better at that time, like in the late 70s, in the 80s, like and even the 90s. They did a really good job marketing cartoons and toys, and that was kind of the bread and butter and where a lot of these companies did make a lot of their money from, but that was kind of a gateway to comics. And uh, like for me, I grew up a Transformer fan, um, but then when I moved back here to the States, you know, I too had an illness, uh, like you were in the hospital and your mom got you your first comics. Same with me. I was in a hospital and my mom got me my first comics and there was some dark stuff in there cause she didn't know. She just went to a random store. Someone was like, Oh, you should get your son some comic books. And my mom's like, Oh, what? And so she's like, Oh, I remember those like Archie. And they're like, no, not Archie. Your son's not going to like Archie. <laughs> she's like, go get him something else. And so they, she went in and she's like, Hey, I have a son. He's in the hospital. What can you recommend? And the guy gave her a, a couple of epi- uh, issues of Christ on Infinite Hurts. Uh, uh, and then there was like, they, they, there was a, a couple issues of Craven's Last Hunt, um, including oh, including the final issue. So I don't know if, when she said son, I don't know if she said how how old I was. Uh, my, my 25 year old son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she went and she's like, oh, my son. And I'm like, well, did they know I was six or seven at the time? And she's like, you know what? I don't know. And I'm like, did you That's say it? Wild. Like, so, um, that's wild. So yeah, like the first Spider-Man comic. It's the most, continu- it's the most continuity <laughs> dense, heavy comic book of its time, and possibly of all time. And and 
here's the book where Spider-Man gets buried alive. It, it was, yeah, you know. <laughs> and, oh, and if it's the last issue, where Craven eats a bullet. That's so. That was one. I don't know if the issue where he got buried was in there, but I know the issue he died. Craven died in the last issue was there, and <laughs> my mom. I read it and I'm like, I like was just, I guess according to her, I was just, I was still after that. I didn't move. And she was like, what's wrong? And she, she comes over and I, I give her the comic and she freaked out. And she was, cause I, Spider-Man to me, like, like you, I watched Spider-Man as Amazing Friends. So I knew who Spider-Man was from that and a little bit from Electric Company. Um, with yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, just a little bit, but mostly oh, with Spider-Man. Sure. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. And uh, but mostly with Spider Man as Amazing Friends, and so my mom was she was blown away. She was like, "Wait, what?" She's like that little cartoon about Three's Company with Spider Man, and in the comic there's suicide. Like my mom freaked out. Um, so yeah, and I said, <laughs> she, she went she went marching over to uh, uh, oh what's his name Easy Reader. What was his name? Oh oh, it's, he's uh, uh, Morgan Freeman. She went marching up to Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Yeah. No, she, I think what she did was she had to, she, you know, sat and had a conversation with me about what I read so that I understood it. Um, but that's a hard thing to talk to a seven year old about, obviously. Um, yeah. Especially when you get it from a Spider Man comic. So she forbid me to read Spider Man for years. So I never got into characters that I love. Like, you know, the whole base of this show is Venom. I never got into Venom until, until after Carnage was, was created because my mom would let me read Spider Man for like five years. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah, so you, so being a, a fan of G.I. Joe, and we'll get to Venom in a second. I know some people who listen sure. to this are like, wait, the whole thing is about Venom? It's like, no, I, I, you know, we're shining spotlights on people who I, I admire, people who are friends of mine, and people who are in the Venom community, but every episode's different. And, and you, although you know about Venom, we'll talk about him soon, but I, your passion, at least, you know, as, as from, a, from my point of view, too, is uh, you love a lot of things in comics. You love X-Men, like you said, and Teen Titans. You're a George Perez fan, I believe. And, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm... Like, And we, we connected on so many things. But the, the content you create revolves around G.I. Joe. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that for other G.I. Joe fans that might be out there. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Um, yeah. So I was, I was, that was a huge part when it comes to pop culture and toys and stuff for me when a kid, it was GI Joe. I, even as a kid, I knew that I had these tears. I knew that I was like, I was all in on GI Joe. I had a lot of masters of the universe, but it was, I knew that it was like second to GI Joe. And then third for me was transformers. I only had a handful, but of course I had the G one, the, 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 the classic transformers. Right. And sold them to pay a month's rent when I was older. Um, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. But hey, you know what? It paid off. It paid a month's rent. <laughs> like, it, it worked. Um, so, like, J.J. Uh, was everything. Like, it was, I had I had a ton of stuff. And this, I was 10 years old in, like, 1985, right? So, mm-hmm. and that was the biggest meat, meat era of G.I. Joe. They had the biggest, it was literally, when you look at the stats, like, they took over the toy world that year. Mm-hmm. So, it was fortuitous timing. Um and then, you know, life goes on. To, you, you get a little older and your tastes change a little bit, but there was always a love for it. And I, I wasn't really part of the, the Joe community at all because I, I don't collect, I still to this day, I don't really collect boys um, just because I'm more comics. And I, I still read them, still read them, still read all of them. And then I was starting to do, I wanted to do a podcast and I was like, what do I want to reconnect with with my childhood? And I went through all the stuff and I was like, this, no, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And then it dawned on me and I'm like, let's do a G.I. Joe podcast. Let's, let's, what's that? What's that going to look like? <laughs> and uh, then I thought of the name Joe on Joe and, and it was born four years later. Nice. And uh, yeah, and I remember the first time you told me you were going to do it, I was A, so excited for you. Um, because I was like, oh, this is like, as someone at that time who was starting to dip my foot into podcasting, I was with Gene doing Nerd Nation, and uh, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, dude, you're you're gonna love it, like you know, especially for people who are creative like you, you know, and you you know, and we'll talk about other stuff that like you and I, we worked on Soul Star together and things, and and oh. like uh, you're a great artist, you're a great writer yourself, and so I was like, this podcasting is a great uh, thing for people who are creative. And then you were even kind enough to have me on an episode, which was really fun, which I, I still remember because I'm like, I'd never remembered that episode. But now when I think of that episode, I always think of hanging out with you talking about it, which is the one where all the Johnny Rocket type restaurants get missiles put on top of them. By um, co- yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're talking about Red Rocket Blair. <laughs> yes, Great. Right. Yeah, right. And uh, that, 
that was amazing. And I was like, yeah, I forgot. Because I've gone back, like you said, Transformers. That's my kind of thing and my nostalgic thing. And I do a Transformer show too, but I don't do it as often, you know. Um, and I do include some G.I. Joe stuff in there, but uh, but only just following the Snake Eyes movie that's coming out. So it's it's more like movie-based focused stuff. Sure, um, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, when you started that. And now how many episodes have you done now of Joe on Joe? Oh, I'm uh, well over 200. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it. I did it. So I did it for three years straight uh, without missing a week, and then I added a Patreon um, in the last year of that cycle, where I was doing uh, one or two additional episodes a week, uh, and and basically, and then and then I took I took I took like a year off from recording new stuff in order to, to focus on another special thing, which I'm sure we'll we'll get into in a second, but. Um, <clears throat> And I'm back to doing the regular episodes now, so it, it, it's a totally active podcast. But I burned through, I did, literally did every episode of the old show and, and the second season, like the second iteration of the old show. And I got a little burned out because the second iteration, it's called the DIC era, is not very good. Okay. Yeah, it's that's... not very good. <laughs> but, but I was probably, I, I, I did those three, I did not miss a week of publishing, you know, with all the ups and downs and travels and sicknesses and all that stuff. I never missed a week to, to publish new. And when I hit that milestone of, okay, we just we just did every episode, like, I need to take a break. But, yeah, um, yeah but after that, though, we did Cold Slither. And that was my favorite thing of all time. Nice. And yeah, and people... Did pe- you... Oh, go ahead. Did you? I don't. I don't know. Did you listen to Cold Slither? Do you remember? Were you, did you? Did you hear that last summer that when it dropped? Uh, you know what? You sent it to me, and I. I know I listened to it, but I don't know if I oh. locked in or if, or if I if I had it on you, the background or if I remember it. If any listen, if I, I don't want to, I don't want to oversell it. But if any of you listeners are fans of G.I. Joe, basically the premise was um, in real 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 talk. They there was an episode of called Cold Slither back in the day where uh, the Dreadnoughts, the, the biker gang, they formed a rock group that took over people's minds. Oh. And it was like mind, it was like, it was like Kiss, Kiss using mind control, right? Yeah, yeah. G.I. Joe had, had to stop them. So I had the idea uh, last year was, well, what if, what would that look like today if they did it behind the music on Cold Slither? <laughs> I, I so I'm I, remembering this now, yeah. Yeah, so I put together I put together uh, fifteen different voice actors that literally spanned because you know Covert was always international people, right? They always had British accents right. and Australian accents, and stuff. so fifteen different voice actors. I got authentic people that spanned five continents, six yeah. countries, six different people from six different countries, authentic voices. Um, my buddy's band they re- they recorded a, the full song called for their in multiple versions to be used throughout the show. Yeah. Um, and then and then I, I was the narrator and we did an absolute full on behind the music edition for Cold Slither. Well, like, top top to tail, for you know thirty five minutes long. What, what would that look like? And I, I think it I think it's fabulous. I'm I'm really proud of it, but I think it's fabulous because everyone really brought their A game. Like everyone treated it so real and so great. It's it's fun. That's awesome. So what I'll do is uh, after this, you know, send me send me links to all your stuff and that's sure. I, I, I usually put all that stuff in the description box so everything we're talking about especially that episode that Joe's talking about there is a link in the description box please go check that out and all of Joe's work um, normally I know I do that at the end of the episode and we'll, we'll reiterate it at the end but since you mentioned it it's like yeah go check out his stuff and check that episode out and I, I do vaguely remember that I yeah, unfortunately, it was like the other day, a friend of mine was like, hey, did you ever read that script I sent you? And I'm like, yeah, I, th- uh, I did. And then I'm like, oh, uh, did did I? And then I had to go look at my emails and I go, oh, yeah, here's the email. I sent you back these notes like a year ago. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, do you remember what the story was about? And I'm like, I have no idea, dude. Like, I, if, it, no, if, it, if it happened a month ago, I might remember it. Um, when you surround when you're surrounded by creative people, which I think both you and I are, um, it's it's it is hard to keep up with everything, you know. So I I, I don't it's I I think it's important to never be butthurt about like what people do or, or don't are aren't able to consume of yours, you know. The, the fact that they give it a look is great. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I never expect any really any of my friends to. I know they always support me, so I don't. I'm like, yeah, I know you support me, so I I don't expect you to watch all my episodes. Joe was the first guy, I think, 
I think I was only at around 150 episodes or 200 by around that time, but I now I'll never forget this. I hope I never forget this. Uh, the Joe, I went up to Joe and he was like, uh, we were recording the Mace episode, and he's like, how many episodes of the show have you done? I was like, oh, I'm like 200 or something, or getting near 200, and you just your jaw. Your jaw hit the ground. You were like, 200 episodes on just Venom? <laughs> and you're like, and you're only at the mace? <laughs> I know. I'm like, G.I. Joe has 200 members. I yeah. one episode on each different member of G.I. Joe if I wanted to. And still not me. You were literally talking about one character. Yeah. Who... who Quite frankly, is isn't even that. It's not like Superman. He's been around for 80 years. He's done a way. I mean, he's barely been in, you know, so it was, I was so impressed in the show and always <laughs> unimpressed by by your prolific output, see. It's, it's so funny. And it's, I, I hate to break this to you, too, because you were like, in, your, in my goodbye video from L.A., you said, hey, everyone in Florida, you're going to love it. And everyone who's a fan of Venom Vlog, you're going to love it because there's only two things to do in, in Florida. It's meth and making videos. And you're like, and... <laughs> and, and and you said, like, Seek's going to be way more prolific now than he ever has been before. And it's so funny because my output of content has actually been way less than it normally is. <laughs> um, well, stop but... making mess. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I got <laughs> I to gotta, I gotta pay the bills, Joe. Um, well, that's true. That is true. That yeah. Is true. <laughs> but the thing is, no one's buying right now. So I did stop making meth. And I, I can't sell it right now. That's uh, true. That's true. No, one, no one's got the money and no one wants to get the COVID. And that's true. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, you, you know, you said we surround ourselves with creative people. We do. And, and what's great about that is that it, it, it afforded us a lot of opportunities to work together on stuff like, like, for example, Soul Star. me and you got to work mm -hmm. on that. And you were one of the artists that I reached out to and, uh, and said like, Hey man, like, and you were like, Hey, I'd love to do a page or two or something to help you get your, you know, hit your goal. And we were doing all this through Facebook. And then I would go to events like uh, comic cons and stuff and walk down artist alley and just go up to people whose art I liked and said, Hey, uh -huh. you know, like, how are your sales? And they're like, Oh, not so good. And I go, well, do you want to work on a project with us? And maybe, you know, hopefully this gets more recognition. And granted, we didn't raise, you know, as much money as I guess in my head, I thought we would hit, but we did raise a good, a good, you know, a good amount. And then also awareness, um, which is really, yeah. which, which really was the goal was the awareness um, part. And, and that project is something so special. And Gene and I talked about it because I had him on the show. And, and uh, you know, it's crazy because Gene helped me co-create that. And then, f uh, you know, five years ago, Gene also had an aneurysm. Um, and that is one that is one of the wild. I, I, I know Gene through you, and he and I are long lost twin brothers. Yeah. Um, when it comes to comics and stuff, I think the world of them. And that was, that was wild when I heard that. Yeah, I, I told him on the show, like, when I got that call... Uh, from his his ex at the time, like uh, I cried, like uncontrollably cry, cried, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, and 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 you know the the thing that Soul Star brought us though, besides enhancing a lot of our friendships, was that it introduced a lot of us uh, to other people, and you know, I mean, uh -huh. we had, like could, could think about that. Me and you got to work on a book that had covers by like Leo Livio Ramondelli, uh, Kevin Eastman, Sean Galloway. Uh -huh. I mean, just like. Uh -huh. It was, it was, oh, it's mind blowing, yeah. and that's all. A lot of that thanks to Ryan from Golden Apple too, who set that up for us. Completely, we did a signing recently with uh, Kevin Eastman for his latest book, Drawing Blood. Yeah. And um, and see, I don't, I don't think I told you this because I, I don't, I don't think I remembered it when I saw you last time. But um, I was able to say to him, "Hey, we worked on a book together." And he goes, "What?" I go, "Yeah, we worked on Soul Star. You did covers for it at one of the interior pages." And he, hundred percent, obviously, he remembered you. And was he was like, oh my god, that was such a great project to be a part of, blah 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 blah. Yeah. But yeah, it was great. He's a he's an amazing guy. Yeah, I've, I think I've messaged him like a couple times over the years. Um, and yeah, I have his email. So like, I, I think only I, I didn't I don't abuse stuff like that. But I think I, I sent him. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I sent him like one or two emails over the few years, and just to let him know I'm doing okay and check in with him. And within like a day or two, he always responds. Like he's he's, he's the yeah, nicest guy. Yeah, he was he was he was super great to us and. Um, from what I hear, that's just that's just who he is, which is yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah. you, you 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 make you you created one of the co-created one of the the iconic characters of a generation, a multiple generation. Yeah, yeah. And and you're and you're this kind and nice and you know to to you know to quote normal people like that's awesome. 
love it. Yeah, he's a he he sets a really a really honest bar for people who are in the industry who who you know yep. work really hard. Like like I love him. He's always been great. Anytime I see him, especially after Soul Star, like always great. I know. Um, I've also had connections like that with James Obar and Todd McFarlane. Um, those are guys Amazing. that I run into, and they're just like. Hey, big bad seek. That's what Todd calls me. Big bad seek. What's up, man? Like, um, and I'm just like, he's like, yeah, yeah, you're the aneurysm guy. You own every issue of Spawn. Yeah, I know. I remember. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's 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 a great. Like you said, living out in L.A., I think both of us could agree. I mean, yeah, like you said, we're both very lucky. We we had great opportunities through you know working at uh you know golden apple like you know then i got you know i got to work at uh, top cow for a little bit and and we get to create these things and we get to meet these amazing people and befriend like who would have thought like you know i grew up watching a lot of uh you know great actors and movies and then i go to golden apple and half of them shop there and it's just like it's such a, yeah. a, a crazy thing to be like oh man i be i got to know samuel L. jackson and recommend comics to him <laughs> you know it's like mm-hmm. it's so it's so wild so um what would you say, like, I, but right before we get into the Venom stuff, and, and actually, you, we can tie that in too, but it's like, what what is like a standout moment for you working at Golden Apple besides, you know, like, obviously, you, you get along with everyone there, you know, the Leibowitz family is great and amazing and supportive of us when we work there. Yeah. Um, but what what is there a standout moment for you there that just really, you know, shines in your mind? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of them. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> there really are. There really are. Like you said, like like having getting to meet Sam Jackson multiple times. You know, right. getting to see that he that he recognizes you and remembers you and um, things like that. And there's some other you know there's some other celebrities whose work I really loved. You know, that come through there. Um, uh, recently, I was I was uh, freaking RoboCop came in. Oh, Peter Weller, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm like, you don't understand how much. A, and he was great and he was so gracious and gave me he, he said to you I'll give you an autograph blah 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 all that, you know, all that stuff I think the the standout moment is uh, when we had the Avengers come by uh-huh. for uh, Endgame yeah or for, for Infinity War it was Infinity War right um, we when the James Corden show she came and li- they literally brought in like every Avenger yeah there was like we got to meet him and, yeah there was like a dozen Avengers there yeah, it was it was wild. It was wild, and I got to meet a goonie that day. You know, Thanos, Josh Brolin. <laughs> I was, that's why I said to him, "I'm like, you're a goonie, man." And he just <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't care about Thanos. I'm like, you're a goonie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, and I'll put a link to that episode from Golden Apple because I think they post on their YouTube. Uh, I'll put that down below, guys. You should check that out. Yeah, the Jane Corden show came by, and they brought. There was only like maybe half a dozen. It looked like only like half a dozen patrons in the store, and then you guys. Yeah, it was. So those yeah, were like it was, it was those are like the six luckiest organic. people in the world. <laughs> totally. It was meant to be. It was meant to be organic. Uh, they were none of them knew what was happening, but they were all there purposely. Like it was. It was not planted, but planted. Sure. So, no. I, yeah. Because, yeah. 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 Um, but it. Yeah. It was. It was. It was wild. It was wild. Yeah. And they were all very cool. And, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. You guys should check. Uh, so you, since that's a standout memory, people can actually share that memory with you and check out the description box down below. I'll put a link to it. Yeah. Um, we still we still get people. So that was what two years ago. We still get people yeah. who come into the, come into the store. Two, three years ago. So two years ago. Three yeah. years ago. Uh, uh, th- yeah. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Still get people coming into the store saying, "I saw I saw your store, or literally I saw you." Uh, but I saw your store on, on the on the James Corden thing when the Avengers came. But from all over the world, people right. visit that store and say that like that was such a huge advertisement for the store. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. It's exactly. That's really good. And I always love when the store gets that kind of attention because obviously I love that store and I want it to to stick around. Um, yeah. The. Uh, so, you know, and, and for me, like, obviously, like, I have moments out in L.A., but I would say for me, probably the newest one that takes that cake is meeting, you know, Tom Hardy a second time on the set of Venom 2. So let's talk a little bit about Venom. Uh, just to wrap this up is, uh, you know, kind of your perspective, because that's what I'm going to do with all my guests is even if they're not mm-hmm. huge, huge Venom fans, I like to get their perspectives on it. Like, if, is there something about the character that you either like or don't like? Is there something like a, a time when that character was around that drew you into the character? Like, were you there when he first came out? Did you read about him later? Um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious, kind of your perspective on the Venom character and how much of a household name he has become now with the success of that first movie. 
Yeah, I so I I for me Venom, I was a, I was a huge fan of Secret Wars. I used to borrow Secret Wars before I had copies. I would borrow that from my buddy Pat, mm -hmm. who had it, and I was like, "What is this? I need to read this." And I loved the scene when Peter first got the symbiote. Like that was my favorite scene. And uh, and then, but I wasn't reading Spider Man stuff at the time. You know, I wasn't into it. And I wasn't. Into, I didn't really follow my child, and I didn't get that he was this amazing artist. So I never had. I was aware of him, but I never really had any of the back of stuff in my collection. Um, and then I, you know, then he, he started showing up more. I started reading crossovers, and I got the. Uh, I think it was the Michelini written uh, trade paperback. Okay. With, yeah, yeah. The, with, the, with Venom on the, with Venom drooling over Spider Man on the cover, which was one of the early trade paperbacks Marvel even put out. That's right. Yep. And um, and I and I really dug it. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. This guy's creepy as heck. Like, what what is going on? Um, and so so I think for me, Venom works best when he's Spider Man's opposite. I I never really I you know like I read the base and I read you know I read his other stuff, Lethal Protector and everything. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of Venom the Lethal Protector. I'm, I like him more as a straight villain and as Spider-Man's opposite. That's, that's my, that's my favorite version of Venom. It's funny because I can already hear my comment section going, kill him! But, uh... Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Come for it. No, come for it. No. no. I mean, I respect, you know, I, res I respect him and, and, uh... <laughs> And all that stuff, but but that's that's not my favorite venom. That's my favorite venom is is you know uh, is like is he's, he's he's supposed to be Spider Man Joker, you know. And I don't enjoy the I don't enjoy the Joker that much when he's on his solo stuff. I like him when he's going against Batman. Right. Yeah, and that's fair. And that's a, that's kind of the thing is like. Uh... I, I like that. Like some people are like, oh, like because I get the feedback all the time. Like when I review something, people are like, oh, you just don't like it because it's different from what you like. And it's like, well, that's another reason why I want to do this show because you're going to see I'm going to talk to a lot of people that do have varying opinions about Venom. But to me, I that never bothers me. Um, yeah. I, I like I love hearing everyone's version of a character, like Superman, Batman, you know, everyone. I love hearing their versions. And yeah, there are, there are people on my show who are like diehard fans that they love Eddie Brock as the anti-hero once he took that turn in Lethal Protector and started going off on his own and was kind of away from Spider-Man and then yeah there are people mm -hmm. like you said like how you are who like him as the antithesis of Spider-Man and it's even funny you compare him to Joker because Venom compared to you know probably what a lot of people would consider his main villains which are like Doc Ock and, and Norman Osborn Green Goblin like those would probably be closer to his Joker but then until Venom came along because that's how popular yeah. Venom is ever since his creation right. is, is he just skyrocketed right to the top of Venom's or Spider-Man's like villain rogues gallery yeah 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 um, yeah, yeah that's he, awesome yeah, he really did yeah he did and it was like over ace he was so successful that their uh, Michelini's original plan was to kill him, uh, kill Eddie Brock, and send the suit around the Marvel universe to bond with other heroes. And Venom was so popular that they, Marvel was like, "There's no way you can kill him now, dude. Everybody loves this guy." Mm -hmm. like, like that. So that just. <laughs> so so yeah, the movie making all that money. Like I was surprised it made as much as it did. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah. But before that movie came out, I think a lot of people, including myself, underestimated what a household name Venom was. And for me to, like I said, you know, now we're past 500 episodes of Venom and I'm only into the Flash Thompson stuff, you know? And wow, that, is, that is wild. <laughs> isn't it? Like, I, is, I, I might actually hit a thousand wild. episodes on this show. <laughs> like, it's so crazy. <laughs> like, uh, people will be like, what did you do while you were alive? And I'll be like, you know, I did Soul Star, I did Monomyth. They're like, no, 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 no. All those, no, I don't know what those are. Uh, aren't you the Venom vlog guy? And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's me. A thousand episodes of Venom. <laughs> um, but that's okay. It's it's good to leave a legacy and uh, and to share one with a character that yeah. that I admire so much. And you know, and I hope we both like you a thousand episodes of GI Joe and me a thousand Venoms. That would be that would be awesome. And oh I, my I, god, I, if I if I hit a thousand, oh my god, I don't. I, you, just, <laughs> you, you just you just made me lose even more hair thinking about a thousand episodes of GI Joe. <laughs> It is, and you and you I love it. I love it, but it is. You know, you know this. It's a lot of work. 
It, no, it is. And I, I do want to maybe we'll, we'll start to wrap up and, and end on, uh, on that note, too, is uh, if people don't realize, like you said, you you did an episode, you didn't miss a week. And there will be weeks like, I'm you know, I'm working a 40 hour job and I know you work a full time job and you got you go home, you, you know, you want to chill out with, you know, the, the wife, you want to yeah. hang out with the, the, the pup and everything. And there's there's a you know people but you make time to do these things that you love and it's like yeah you're doing an episode a week there was a time i think one week i worked 40 hours that week and still pumped out 14 episodes and wow. and now granted my episodes are you know they could be anywhere from 5 minutes to 20 minutes you know so it's it's right. you know it's not like i'm really making oh, that well, that right. much um, then I t- listen. Then I take back and I take back any compliments. I mean, my episodes are are, are hour long, edited epic with, with soundtrack and music. And, yeah, I mean, exactly. See, see you got to you got to step up the game. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's just you know, it's just me in my underwear just talking for five minutes. So it's not that impressive. Hey, well, listen, I'm also often in my underwear. We're okay. <laughs> But uh, but no, people don't realize the the hard work that it goes in. And I actually saw a guy on Instagram uh, the other day or yesterday. Uh, he said he's been pumping Venom stuff out on Instagram daily for two and a half years, and he's giving it up because he's burnt out. And it, it's it does like people don't think about that. They're like, oh, but just keep making videos, keep making videos. And you're like, dude, it's. I mean, I, I I've been talking yeah. about Venom now for 510 episodes, and now I have this secondary show where I talk about him a little bit more with people who are fans of his and stuff. So it's like. It's like, but, you know, I'm not going to stop anytime soon, but I do go through those phases where I'm like, hey, guys, I'm taking a month off, you know, and just. It's so funny. I, you know, listen, not, 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 to, not to get negative, I know we're wrapping up, but, like, when, uh, so when I first started the Patreon, it was, it was two years into doing the show free, you know, weekly and everything, and I was just looking at the numbers, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm paying for every, you know, all the hosting fees and everything out of pocket and stuff, and I was like, well, you know, let, let me do, like, a, a dollar to three dollar Patreon thing. Yeah. You know, just to, just to see if, you know, my fans can help support it. And there were a handful of people, or, you know, at least one 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 or two people who were like, you're just trying to make a quick cash grab. I'm like, are, are you insane? <laughs> it's like, like do, do, do you have any idea? Do you have any idea what, you know, not to, you know, it was all my choice. I'm not complaining about it, but like, doing this stuff, it, it takes time, money. Yeah. You know, energy, effort, you know, and it's like, yeah, if, if people want to help, cool. If not, cool. We're still going to do the show, but you know, don't don't hate on people for trying to trying to. Well, know, there's, there's nothing survive wrong. Survive and continue the fandom. It's wild. It's wild. Right. There's nothing wrong to me because uh, I see this as a business endeavor, and I want it to lead to other things. Like I try really hard to only bring accurate news to my audience. Like I actually, I just recorded an episode last night where I basically kind of threw some shade at a website who completely got all these details wrong about the Venom 2 filming. Um, uh-huh. And and there's no reason for it. They're a bigger website. They have way more resources than me, and yet I'm correcting them. And that's been a lot of my frustration this past like couple months and, and the things that make me want to uh, uh, keep going. Like, like right when I started to burn out, these websites started coming out and putting out bullcrap information and doing half-assed journalism jobs. And most of my time now is spending uh, correcting them, and it's uh, right. and that but that I like that it feels very Eddie Brockish where I'm like no we're gonna get the facts <laughs> right you know we're we're gonna be real journalists and if not and if not I'm gonna eat your brain <laughs> exactly but uh, but no people do forget that it's work and people do forget that yeah we love doing this but we also because we put in a certain amount of hours a week working on it yeah we should get paid for it you know. Um, and there's yeah. nothing, and there's nothing wrong with thinking that way. And I know people are like, "Oh, dude, you're a sellout." And I'm like, "Look, I'm never gonna move the Venom vlog to Patreon and make you pay for episodes from now on. I'm never gonna do that. But I might create new shows on Patreon that if right. you if you like Venom, you might like that stuff. And I tried the Patreon thing too. Actually, I'm can I canceled it uh, as of today. Um, oh, okay. And and that was just because the engagement. Like, I get a lot of engagement on YouTube. I do have a I do. Yeah have good amount of supporters on patreon uh, at least for a show my size and and someone at my level i'm doing i was doing good over there but i just i'm like you know what i don't want to take anyone's money anymore if i can't engage um right. uh, that, to me that i i want to hear what people are liking about the shows what they're not liking i like the back and forth because i like improving my content 
and uh, and I and people comment you know on that on me all the time. They're like, man, you're very interactive on YouTube with your comment section, and people on Instagram and Twitter. And I go, yeah, but that's part of the job, right? Like, uh, you know, and and that helps me keep my content better, and it helps keep me honest. And that's the big thing is uh, I don't want to slip into the realm that these other places go into. But uh, that's a rant for another day. But you know, Joe. I do. I love your work ethic. I, I love that um, your passion for things like you've been one of the I mean, I, and I told my mom this, like, she was like, oh, who are you going to miss most in, in, in California? And, you know, when I list a couple people, you know, obviously you're on that list every time you and Beck. And I'm like, you know, Joe has been one of the biggest supporters I've ever had in day to day life. He's always checked in on me for my health. Um, he, he's he's, you know, come over and helped me with stuff before, like. Joe is just the nicest guy in the world, and he's a very passionate dude. And if you guys can please go check out the links down below to the stuff he's worked on and support him in some way, any way that you want, uh, you know, even if it's just viewing and clicking for now. But join join up. Do you still have your Patreon going? Um, we do, yeah, we do. But you know, it, it's it's more about it's more about just loving GHL. So check <laughs> out, you know, just check just just check out, you know, if it, if you feel and if you want to, if you love what I do and, and want to support, great. But it really. GI Joe is one of those fan bases that we need. Uh, I, I, I like to liken it right now to uh, Star Trek in the seventies. Okay, where it's kind of dormant and it's really being um, kept alive by fandom, not necessarily by Hasbro. Right. Um, and they're 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 about they're about they're coming back though. They are coming back. We got to think as we obviously and they're finally they they've just started re releasing um, some collector action figures for it and stuff. But for a good, good, good five years or so, it's been pretty dormant. So um, you know, check give GI Joe a chance. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's always it's like a big superhero team. You know, you got a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of different specialties fighting bad guys in crazy costumes. It's true. It's great. If you've never been exposed to GI Joe before. Definitely see it through the the, uh, the lens of Joe Slepsky on his show, Joe and Joe Podcast. And definitely check out you know Hasbro's content they put out there. They put out comic books. Snake Eyes movie coming up. I'll be covering news on that again soon past, once we get past the pandemic. And then also the new toys coming out, which look amazing. So, yeah, get into the world of Joe uh, through our friend Joe here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Joe, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, again, links down below so you can check out more stuff. And, uh, Joe, where can people find you on social media? Well, you can always find me at Joe and Joe Pod at gmail dot com, uh, and or, or, <laughs> sorry, you can always find me on social at Joe and Joe Pod. That's my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, and uh, yeah. And see, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's this has been one a delight to catch up with a, with a very good friend, and two uh, great to reach your audience talking about Venom. I can't wait to see Venom too. Uh, release the carnage. Is that what it's called? Release. The carnage. <laughs> yeah, let there be um, carnage. Yep. Let there be carnage. <laughs> I like that they're I like that they're steering into it though. They're steering into how kind of kind of crazy it is. That's a that's why I love that so much. Like it's like yeah. it, critiques aside, the fact that they're just like, hey, we know what lane we're in and we're sticking to it. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Awesome, man. Well, have a good one, Joe. And everyone out there, if you like the show, thank you uh, for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, we'll see you in the future. Peace.